What's up? And welcome back to Opposites Track Podcast. This is Sonia Ramirez, your girl, and I'm sitting next to Miguel Ramirez. What's up, everybody? How was your day? How was your week? How was your life? Life. Going. <laughs> What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Opposites Attract Podcast. But before we get started, this episode is brought to you by us and you guys that listen and support the show. So make sure you guys go to oppositesattractpodcast.com and we'll get into a lot more of it in detail a little bit later on in the show. But when you go to our website, you guys can see ways to follow our social media. You can watch the show there. You can listen to it there. You can share it with your friends. You also see links to how you can support the show by going through our Amazon link and buying things that you would normally buy on Amazon. And you also see a link to Trust Inc., which is our notary company where you can get your uh, mortgage documents signed or notarized by us. You guys can find out more about that and we'll talk about it later. Uh, We're also affiliates with Pinwheel, which is uh, the best smartphone available for kids. And you guys can use promo code O-A-P-T-E-N, all together, all in caps, on pinwheel.com if you want to know more about that and we'll talk about it later. But uh, we have our merch. We have our merch on Amazon that you guys can search for, Opposites Attract Podcast on Amazon. And buy us a coffee. And buy us a coffee or a whiskey. Today is actually a coffee and a whiskey day. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just how we're feeling today. All right. Coffee and whiskey. It's kind of, I'm not used to doing the commercials at the beginning and I'm still trying to get used to them. We'll get used to it. <laughs> Because we're supposed, we've been supposed to be doing it this way. Yeah, no, it's a good idea. I get it. You know, I get it. Because then the people that are listening have to listen. <laughs> yep, we got you guys hostage. We do it at the end. They're like, okay, like, wait, click, it's yep. over. <laughs> Show's over. Anyways, so yeah, so man, it's been it's been another awesome week. It's been busy as shit. Oh my god, it's been like nonstop the last few days. Yes. And I had the day off yesterday. And it was just balls to the wall. Today was good, though. You know, today, today we, we uh, surprised Audrey with some softball tickets, uh, ASU, and, and Arizona won. won. 20 so in a row. That that was, yeah, that was super awesome. 20 consecutive wins for the nice. for ASU softball. I, uh, I love the fact that Audrey is truly enjoying softball. Yeah. You know, because our kids, you know, they've been in soccer She's done track. She's done other things. Basketball. Jiu-jitsu. And we're like trying to find something that she's going to love. And I think we found it. Yeah, maybe. I think I think I, so. No, I think so. No, yeah. It's not I don't think maybe. Well, I, she's you know, found a sport that she really likes. Yeah. You know what? And I think at the bottom line though, like something that and, and something that we we talked to uh our cousin Joe. Which is we had a we had a podcast, a great podcast with him. Mm-hmm. Like it was one of our first episodes, like way back in the day. It's the one that we didn't do in our studio. We did it at his gym. Yeah, um, we were in New York at the time. Yeah, we were in New York. So, yeah, and uh, he's got like a professional baseball training facility, Max Effort Baseball. If you guys are in New York and you're looking for a place to train, it's awesome. But um, you know, he's been talking to her because he's got a lot of experience. That's like their passion, right. you know. And um, one of the last things that he told her was. Make sure you have fun. Yes. You know, enjoy it. And that's something that I've been telling her, you know, like. Cause do, you, do you remember all five tips he gave her? Because he gave her five tips. Uh, I, I don't remember all and of them. They were all so good. But they were, yeah. Yes. You know, one was, you know, be okay. Be with, okay with losing. Yep. Be okay with losing. Um, Have fun. Good grades. Get good grades, yeah. Yeah, like he. There was also one, like, it's okay to win. Yes. Like, it's okay to win. Yes. And that was so good. When I heard him. Or to want to win. You know? like Yes. Yes. And I'm like, that is so good. Because that that's kind of like, it's one of those things like where now it almost like, well, we're, we don't have to keep score. And it doesn't, you know, we're all winners here. It's like, actually, no, you guys are losers. <laughs> we kicked the <laughs> shit out of you guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's okay to want to win. And the thing is that, one of the things that he did say, now that I remember it, is it's or, or no, because Audrey was telling her that on her, her softball team, it was their first year with a new coach yes. and they they didn't do a lot of winning. Right. right? Yeah. But one thing that he told her is like, well, you can't appreciate winning. That's right. Unless you That's lose. That's right. Yes. It was so good. So in the background, I'm off taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, coach. Yeah. 
<laughs> but you know, love it. And I mean, I think you know, like sports for me, it, and I think it's everything. Like if I if I go play racquetball right now, like right now, I don't fucking play racquetball. I right. don't. Yes. But if I pick up my racket and I go on the court, I'm you're gonna, gonna get, play. I'm gonna get serious. Right. You're gonna play. Yes. You know. So like yes. when it comes to sports, like I don't, I, I don't mess around. Like I like, I love having fun. I love sports. I love competing. If I lose, it's not a big deal. Like whatever. Mm-hmm. Um. But kind of like Joe said, I like winning. Right. But I do realize that, like with Audrey, I tell her, like, make sure you're having fun. And I, and I tell her, you can play softball as long as you're having fun. If it's not fun, then, I mean, this is a game. It's supposed to be fun. Right. You know what I mean? She is such a beautiful girl, um, like inside and out. And I want to read, I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do it. Because that's how our podcast goes. <laughs> And I re- I want to read the post that I put up about her um, three days ago. So I put, she is spunky, charismatic, loving, kind, giving, forgiving, honest, playful, gentle, yet strong, no bull kind of girl. Right? Yeah. Like that. that is so yeah. her. She fights to be the best she can be. She doesn't compare herself to anyone else and knows that she she is unique. There is no one like her. She strives to do her best and pushes herself even when times get tough. Now, trust me, she did not just wake up this way. No. I mean, it's so much energy to raise kids. It takes every bit of ounce of energy to be a good parent. Yeah. And not just to give up because it's just, it takes so much from you. I think, I think everybody gives up, but as a parent, you gotta, you come back to it. Right. Every fucking time. Yeah. Every, well, like, when, it's, we, it's, when it's, it's time always, for us to go to sleep. It's no. like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> because the homework will fucking wear you out to the point where you quit. Yes. yes. And then you're back at it the next day or mm-hmm. you're back at it in an hour or, you know, after you cool. But it's just it's nonstop quitting and starting again. That's right. Quitting you you fire again. yourself. You rehire yourself. <laughs> and I put she has had many struggles, but never gives excuses. The other day at her track meet, after she completed running a 400, she shared with me her inner thoughts. As she was running and two girls ran past her, she said she told herself to not quit and never give up because she is not a quitter. She said she told herself even if she doesn't win the race, she would feel good because she gave it her all and she ended up coming in second place. Yeah. Yeah. And and at, and the thing is that she came in second place. But she passed somebody like right at the end and yes. she was about to pass the other person too. She would have came in purse at first if yeah. she would have just like started like pushing maybe, herself a little sooner. Yeah. But the thing is that she, um, like I told her, I was like, well, maybe if you started running a little sooner mm-hmm. and she was like, well, I might've been tired. I would have got tired sooner if mm-hmm. I, I started running sooner. I was like, that, that might be true. I was like, but a lot of times people think that they don't have it in them. But they have more than they actually think they have right. in them than, than they really do. So reading this post, I think of just all the challenges that we've had with her from homework to reading to keeping her room clean to helping around the house. Like it's, come on, parents. <laughs> yeah. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, just the, the, the time, the energy, the constant nagging. Yep. You know, it wears you out. And when you finally, when you finally get to see how your hard work (laughs) is unfolding, because you get to see that they are hearing you. They are listening. I heard her the other day tell me that she felt good walking into a clean room. Her room. Yeah. Oh, you guys don't understand. <laughs> we, we've room. talked about If you guys have been listening for a while, you, you know. Right. Yeah, you know, we've talked and, about it before. And it's just It's like something. the room will be clean one minute and then it's destroyed the next. Right. And she spent like hours cleaning it. Yes. And I remember having a fight with her about her homework. And now, you know, if if she's like a straight A student. But if that A drops down to a C, 
She is on top of it. I don't even have to say anything. She is on, she gets on herself yeah. about it. So well, I don't yeah. even have to. Yeah. Like she handles it. Yeah. And she keeps herself organized so that she can do the things that she wants to do. <sighs> and you know what? Now that you mention it, like this is something that as a kid, I used to think about like using sports as a tool to keep kids in line. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you find that passion for kids, that, that sport that they love, that they love. for me, that was football. Mm, I see what you're saying. And I didn't have football, but you know what? All my dad had to do was be like, mm -hmm. this kid likes football. Let's put him in, let take him out of this school and put him in a school with a football team. Mm. Now he's going to have to keep his grades up if he wants to play football. I, I would have fucking done anything to play football. Right. You know? Yeah. But I didn't have that. So I was like, all right, whatever. I'm just yeah. going to go hang out with my friends. Like, I got better shit to do. Right. You know what I mean? But when I did get that chance in Florida, mm -hmm. it was different. Yeah. You know? So, you know, as a parent, <coughs> you know, it feels so good. It feels rewarding um, yeah. to see that all the nagging and all the hard work <laughs> has paid off because I'm telling you, we're going through the same thing with Joey. Yeah. You know, struggling, just the constant fighting with him, with his work. And it's just nonstop. And it's like, I have hope because I know that one day no, <laughs> he's just going to, he's going to get it. It's well, going to click. It's one of those, I think it's one of those things where like Joey's at a stage that we've already went through with Audrey, but it's kind of right. like we don't even remember. Or they're just different kids. They're just different kids. Well, that's kids. true. Yes, yes. You know? Yeah. Different and, things motivate, you know, each kid. And each. there's things that we see in Joey that sometimes, oh, man, kind of like what we've talked about, like that we see in him that are a reflection of us in a way mm -hmm. that we don't like that kind of drives us crazy. Yes. But. That's why God gives us our kids. But. To wake us up. He also has certain, like, there's certain things that I'm like, this he's going to be all right. You know what I mean? Like, there's, oh, cer yeah. there's certain things that you're just like, you know, he should he should already be past this point by now. But then there's other things that he does, and you'll be like, mm -hmm. he's he'll be fine. You know, he'll he, right. he'll he's going to figure it out. Well, the other day, you were telling me that he just doesn't have that fight. The fight. With the him. drive. Yeah. Right. But... If it's something that he's interested in, he's going to go for it. You know what I'm saying? It it just it, it yeah. all depends. And that's and that's what I'm saying is that in certain things, kind of like in jujitsu or things that he's not interested in, school right. jujitsu, just, just doesn't care. Yeah. And he, but when he wants a transformer, <laughs> he will grab a bag of books. He'll he will fill up a, a bag hustler. of books, throw them over his shoulder, and he will go walk door to door and start selling books Not to just try to books. make it's some like money. Whatever he has that he either no, he's but, outgrown, but he's thinking of like, yes. okay, so what can I sell? That's so right. I need like this much more money. I'm gonna go and and I'm like, dude, I need to know what streets you're gonna be on so I know where to look for you. <laughs> you know, can't you can't just take off knocking on doors, you know, and don't go inside anybody's house. Like we got to train them. I mean, he is trained up, but. <laughs> But those are the kind of things that it's like, you know, he is a smart kid. Yes. There are certain things that maybe he should be farther along than he than he should be now. But he's going to be all right. Like yeah. he's smart. He's he does have a drive and a hustle for yes, certain he things. Does. Yes. For things that he wants. And think about us as adults. Which, I yeah. mean, we are the same way when when we are passionate about something. Yeah. We what, give a fuck about anything else. No, <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but yeah. when it's something. Who the hell wants to do math? Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking reading. I don't want to read this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, think about, you know, working out, you know, jujitsu, you know, like you enjoy jujitsu. You don't enjoy, you know, getting, you know, handled you all know, the time. But you, you know what, though? I think another part of it is just doing it mm -hmm. because this is this is something that I talked to Joey about, too. It, there, there's time there, I think that kind of like jujitsu jujitsu is a fucking perfect there, there's so many analogies and so many different ways that you can apply like the theory and jujitsu to life but it really like if you don't go to it all the time it's fucking uncomfortable yes it sucks it's like speaking in public you don't do it that shit you get Ugh. up in front of a room 
and you're fucking, your voice is cracking, you're nervous, mm-hmm. palms are sweating. Mm-hmm. And when you don't fight, when you slap and bump, you're like, oh, fuck. And they put hands on you, you're like, oh, shit, it's going down. <laughs> but the thing is that when you fight all the time, when you're presenting all you're the time, when you're doing yep. this stuff, you know it's like, stuff. all right, you slap, bump, all right, let's go. Yep. Oh, he put his hand here, I'm going to grab this here. And it's right. just like. All right, let's let's just go. When you're presenting, you stumble on your words a little bit. You laugh about it and you move on to the next thing. But it's smooth. You're comfortable with it. Right. And even though it's something that you may not like, something that you don't really enjoy, but the more you do it, the easier. And and it's crazy because running's the same shit. It, there's a lot of things that are the same way. When you start running and it's like, oh, this fucking sucks. This is horrible. This. But then once you've been, you get on a groove and you start running the fucking wind's hitting you in the face, the fucking sun is shining, you're fucking bumping the music, and you're just like on a fucking roll. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. shit sucks, but it, it, it's one of those things that after you do those shitty things, you always go back and look at it, and you're like, I feel pretty good right now. You know what I mean? And that's and that's life. Doing the things that you don't want to do. And, and I, had a, I had a conversation with Joey about all that. You know, it's like, dude, you just got to get used to it. I was like, this is life. I was like, the people that are successful are people that do things that they don't want to do that they know is good for them. I mean, you the people that are just like, oh, I don't like that. I'm not doing that. I don't like this. That doesn't feel good. I'm not doing that. Oh, that looks like too much effort. I'm not doing that. And it's like, well, they're going to live a rough life. It's going to be hard. Well, I mean, that's, you know, the book. I've been going through some things. Yeah. You know, and there's a book that I've been listening to called uh, The War of Art. And you've been telling you've been telling me I need to bef- listen and read this book for for a while. And do you agree? I just. Yeah. Yeah. I just let listened you to listen a little to bit of like it. five minutes. And, of it. and they were talking about like the resistance of like when you when you know that you have to get something going, when you should be getting something started, when you should be making a move on your next whatever. It's just in, it it's. Like he says, there's two lives we live, the life that we're living and the unlived life. It's all the things that you know that you should be doing, that you want to do. If there is change that has to be made, like if you are in an unhealthy relationship and you know 100% that this relationship, it's either you got to move, right? You got to move and take a step to survive because some relationships, whether, you know, they're in an abusive relationship or, you know, it's mentally, you know, abusive, whatever it is. It's like, you know, in your gut, you know, a hundred percent that this is not healthy, that you are not supposed to be where you are, but you're so scared of being alone. You're so scared of making that move that you, uh, Par- know, like you feel paralyzed and you can't see yourself anywhere else, even though you feel you're supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like you're so scared of it's change. The comfort. You're so it's scared the comfort of where you're where you are. And, and where especially you've if you've been with someone for years. You know, and people stay in these situations and it eats at them. He talks about resistance is the killer of all hopes, of all dreams. That fear, the procrastination, the the unlived life, you know, like if yep. you, you know, for, well, with me, what I'm going through right now, I've gotten a few. Well, that that's something I wanted to talk to you about because you've, you've been listening to this book and, you know, anybody that's been listening to this podcast for a little bit of time. You know, we've talked about how we're trying to get some things going for, you know, for you to start a coaching business. And you've also start, recently started talking about writing a book or writing a couple books. And you've kind of gotten started on that. And you've been kind of doing a lot of thinking. And kind of what I've been telling you was that the things that you're looking at doing are a lot more personal. You're giving a lot more of yourself in these things as opposed to doing a business like if we owned a mechanic shop. It's like, all right, well, we fix cars. That's not me putting myself into it. It's just me fixing cars or you doing loan signings. Like, yeah, you build relationships and you do all that. But at the end of the day, you're signing loan paperwork where coaching is a lot more personal. You know what I mean? Like you're giving them parts of you when you're doing that type of business. 
and you've been meeting a lot of resistance, right? And just kind of thinking about it now, there's a couple things that I want to kind of talk about, but one is I want to talk about like the resistance that you've been feeling maybe and where that comes from. And then also like with kids and being parents, like we know that's something that holds us back, right? But as parents, we want to make it so that the kids feel that resistance and just go for it. You know, so like, how can we change? Like when we have to deal with that resistance, how can we make it different so that our kids recognize the resistance and then go for it anyway? Because Mm -hmm. they know that's what they should do, you know? But what about you? So where, what, what is this resistance? How, like, if you could try to describe it, what would you say? Like, what do you feel when you start thinking about the coaching business and writing the books and, you know, all this personal stuff that you want to start doing? Like, what are your, what are your feelings towards that? What do you think when you start trying to put things in motion? Fear. It's all fear based. Yeah. Mine is all fear based. And what's so ridiculous is that I've done, like I've beat resistance many times before. And this is what I'm starting to see listening to the book and taking time and looking at my past. I was scared of love. I never wanted to get married. I never wanted to get to have kids. I beat resistance both of those times. Yeah. Do you think it has anything to do with what I'm telling you, like how it's a lot more personal? Because I kind of feel like. It's because where I'm supposed to be. It is my purpose. I feel that it's my God given purpose. Yeah, that's why. And that's what I'm saying, because trust think we started it a couple of years ago with and it did well. Yeah. Right? And, and we, it's doing well. Yeah. And I it was a but thought and I jumped on it with no fear. But what I'm saying is so the the signing business is, like I said, it's not really it, it is you, but it has to do with loan signings. You well, know, but like, what I'm saying, what the other thing that I'm saying is like kind of like we're also looking at Turo, like renting vehicles and that sort of thing. That's renting via. It's not us. It's a business that we're starting. So I'm kind of thinking we figure out the process and we can start making money with Turo right away. Yeah. The podcast is more like us. You know what I mean? And the podcast has also, it hasn't been easy. It's been tough. And, you know, we work on things to grow it. But it seems like the things that are more personal, more like mm-hmm. part of your identity, are the things that you get the most resistance towards. You know, like Turo's not one. Trust Inc. isn't one. Trust Inc. was one. There was resistance, but I'm having to think about the resistance of doing my first signing was hard. Yeah. There that fear was there. What I'm feeling was there, but it wasn't as strong. It's like, all right, enough's enough, Sonia. Yeah. Do it. You gotta do it. There was resistance there. My friend brought it to my attention the other day. And I'm like, you know what? You are right. Because I was telling her, I'm like, there was no resistance with trusting. I thought about it. I dove in it. I did it. Right. Yeah. She's like, but what about your first signing? Ooh, I'm like, you're right. Yeah. I was, I, there was a lot of resistance, but not as much. Yeah, I guess so. Right. Not as there wasn't. It's just because it's been so long. You probably don't remember what that was like. Right. You know? Yeah. Because you forget. It's just start, maybe it's just starting something new all over again. Yes, but I can tell you with this, with the coaching and the books, I'm feeling a lot more resistance than I did with the first signing. And I think it's because like in this book, you know, I'm very, you know, spiritual. I believe in, you know, God. And I just, I I always felt like I had this gift and I knew that I like, I I felt that I had a bigger purpose. Yeah. I've always felt that way, but I didn't know what that looked like. I didn't I didn't know what that was going. I didn't know what that looked like. Do you and know what it is yet? It 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 is this coaching. Yeah. It's I always knew that there was a book in my future, and it's also the book. The book is related to the coaching i mean it's all related the podcast is going to be a part of the coaching this coaching and 
you know, it may be marriage coaching, you know, us doing it together. I'm not sure, you know, what that looks like, but I know that it, there's it, coaching, but I feel like the book is the first is the beginning of everything else. So have you, I know you've been typing. I mean, cause you, there's times when I'll go upstairs and you got the laptop open and you're doing your thing. Have you started writing parts of the book or? Yes. You, I even have some of the chapters down. Do you? Okay. Yeah. What but I've been it? listening to a lot of YouTube uh, videos on how to write a book. Well, this is something I haven't even asked you about, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, you've been telling me about the books and that you've, you've had ideas and thoughts and I know you've been writing stuff and last on the last podcast, we talked about how kind of like your meditation has also kind of changed. Like you, you've been kind of letting, letting things go and releasing stuff by writing stuff out. And, right. um, wh- what have you written for the book? Like, what are, what are your ideas so far for the book? Like if, I don't know if you want to give it out or any of that yet. It's going to be, one's going to be a relationship book and the other is going to be a parenting book. Um, but it's going to, both books are going to be self-help healing from within. Okay. I'm with stories of yourself and, and how you realize you know, people I know yeah. and yeah, the whole process, the whole healing process. Yeah. Because I feel that I have that down. Like I, I, I know because I've done it, but I've also helped others. Yeah. And so I, 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 I have that down. It's just now taking what I know and writing it down. Yeah. And everyone that I've talked to in deep conversation about it, they're like, you need to get that book out. Like you need to get it out soon. So with the resistance that you felt towards writing the book and starting the coaching and all that, and and you've been listening to this book, what have you gotten out of the book that's kind of helping you? Because it's talking about the resistance that you're feeling. It's so help- how how is the resistance that they talk about in the book? And what you feel like, is it the same or like, what do you think? It's helping me to recognize why I'm feeling what I'm feeling. And what is it? Why, why, why is there so much resistance? Because this is my God given purpose. It's what I'm supposed to be doing. It's where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going, you know, and It's what, yeah, it's what I'm supposed to be doing. It's my purpose. It's, it's where I'm, it's my walk. It's my journey. It's my, it's my end all. It's once I, once this starts, everything else is just going to come together. Everything. Yeah. And I'll be walking through my journey. And I feel like it's, it's going to be. It's probably like the one that you've had the most resistance and the most difficulty with. But I'm so excited because about it. Because when it actually happens, it's going to be the most fulfilling. Yeah. Because that's the one that like, this is me. This is what I'm doing. You know what I mean? I've always felt that I was here to help people. My heart is in serving. Money has never motivated me. Money has never moved me. And I think that's why this is such a big thing. Because trusting is successful. The money yeah. came from trusting. And when I start thinking about trusting and ask, I ask myself, why, why do I enjoy it so much? And it's the people. I mean, I would come home sharing with you stories. It's like I'm ministering to people yeah. during the signing. Like yeah. I'm doing and, and, you know, and that is Dude, what I enjoy. It's crazy That's what I love. You would come home with stories and I'm like thinking, I was like, Dude, you should be getting paid for this shit. Like the shit that you would be telling me like, oh, I had an appointment today. Sign some mortgage documents for somebody or whatever. But then you would start telling me the story that you guys were talking about. Ah, they told me about their husband and -and so-and-so and this was happening and this and that. And like they tell you their whole fucking life story. And I'm like, you should be getting paid for this shit. (laughs) You know what and I mean? And there's times where we would be crying together. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like I would do. So I would do make that. Make sure you hire trust thing for your loan <laughs> signing. Because you may not just get a loan signing. You're going to have an experience. But um, I would do it for free. Yeah. You know, like yeah, I you would, would. tell me that. You know, and even in the coaching, like I'm thinking to myself, it's like the people there are people that need the help that I'm going to provide, but may not be able to afford uh, the fee. So I'm I want to figure out a way to where I can provide my services 
and not starve. You know what I'm saying? Like be able to do the work and help those people that need the help but can't afford to hire me as their transitional coach. I don't even know what it's going to be called yet. That will come in time. But but the book... And I think that's where the book, because even though they may not be able to hire me one on one, the book itself is going to be everything that I will be. Yeah. You're going to put it all in the book. Yeah. Yes. It's a foundation. Yes. Yes. You know, but some people need that individual face to face yeah you know some people something a little bit more personalized i'm that way yeah but others can take the book and and run with it and run with it i mean i did my own self-processing yeah and it's funny i have a friend who's a psychologist a very good friend and a lot of the things that i've been doing she's like who showed you or who mentored you or who coached you on how to do that and i'm like god (laughs) You know, I've never seen a therapist or a counselor or never hired someone outside, you know. And like we've talked about, sometimes it's just a matter of thinking and sitting and just like really trying to process things, you know, process the things that we've been through and why we feel the way we feel and where these things are coming from. and And a lot of times people are not, Like we're walking, we're living life on autopilot, right? I mean, there's times where I don't remember how I got home. Yeah. Have you ever done that? Yeah. I think everybody has. You know, and, and we go through life that way. We don't take a moment to breathe in our surroundings or those special moments that we have with our children or our significant other or our friends. Yeah. You know, we're always with the phone in front of, you know, a phone in our hand. We'll be having dinner with, you know, our spouse. And instead of really being there with them mentally and physically, you know, we may be going through social media Instead of taking that time to really just sit there and be there and have those conversations that bring light, Man, you know? Like, yeah. And I think that is where we are losing bits and pieces of our joy in life. Yeah. And we take the little things for granted, you know? So being able just to slow down and sit with ourselves to help ourselves to figure out why we are feeling these emotions of depression, anxiety, stress. You know, if you were to sit and trace, like sit in the, in the feeling and really think about the things that you've gone through, you'd be able to trace the feeling of jealousy or envy or guilt, like you will be able to trace it back to that event. But so many of us don't want to take that time okay. and we don't want to face. But do you have to be at a certain point to feel that way? Because there's a lot of people that if they start tracing, maybe they would start blaming Because you got to start tracing, I think, with a certain mindset. That's part of Because if you start tracing and blaming, that's not going to do anything. All all it's going to do is make shit worse. Right. No, it's... It's like, oh, I got this feeling. That's because my parents. And they're a piece of shit. And they fucked up. And this and that. And if you start doing all that, it's going to be worse. You know? You just take... Right. You got to take responsibility. Exactly. You know, and that's all part of healing. That's part of the process. And that's so part and so did this to me, and yeah. then that happened to me. That's and part of the transitional coaching. Yeah. You know, it's part of you know just taking in and learning how to forgive. Not just speaking it. It's something you have to feel. It's some. It's a phone yeah. call. Many phone calls of, you know, like I had a you know situation like I had abandonment issues. 
you know, because of, you know, my dad, you know, I had some daddy issues that I was never aware of. Yeah. You know, and that's a whole nother podcast. But when I traced it back, it wasn't blaming my dad. It was forgiving. Like forgiving wholeheartedly, not just speaking it, but calling him more, talking to him, taking him out to lunch, having deep conversations, conversations that were uncomfortable conversations. Yeah. And letting him know that I love him and and really just getting down to it. Yeah. And when you forgive, when you truly forgive, those emotions that you are holding in are released. And that's when the healing process begins. And it's not like, oh, you did it one time, meaning you had that one conversation and now you're 100% free because there will be triggers that come up. But now that you are aware of where that feeling is coming from, yeah, it's a thought that comes in and a thought that goes right b- back out because now you're aware, you've identified it and you've forgiven it and you've forgiven yourself and you've let it go. You've healed But it's a process. I mean, I've been doing, I've been self-healing for years. So there's something that I want to talk about. Uh, Because, like, do you feel that you have to have forgiveness? Or can you have, like, understanding and acceptance of the situation or of the person and what they've been through? You don't necessarily have to have forgiveness, but you understand and you accept the way they are. And it is what it is. Yes. And or or the willingness to forgive if it comes up because it may never come up. Do you know what I mean? Well, you may have. But before we get into that. Oh, don't do that. (laughs) I want to give a shout out to everybody that bought tickets to our event. Yeah. Won't you let's go ahead and Dude, get into that a little you, bit? Why didn't we get into that a little later? Because we're 37 minutes in oh and we gosh. should be doing ads again. Remember what we talked about at the top of the show? <laughs> you can't get me into a deep conversation and then go there. <laughs> For those right. of you that don't know, we're having a live event, our first live event uh in May, next month. May 21st. May 21st. <laughs> and uh yeah, we the tickets, I mean, they're selling out already, right? They, I can't they are. It. I can't believe we're going to say our shows are selling out. <laughs> so <laughs> right? we want to give a shout out to Christina and Boo Martin, Amanda and Brian York, Nicole and Thomas Miranda, Robert Morales, Ruby Barrios, Bruce Fontenot and Beatrice Parra. Joshua Shaw and Rosemary Sapien. Dang. (laughs) Woo-woo. Now, this is going to be a great event. It's going to be so fun. It's going to be all adults because there's going to be some adult conversation. We're going to have some Some activities and exercises for everybody. It's going to be a great, uplifting event. So there's still some tickets left. And if you guys want to go to the event, make sure you guys go to our uh, group on Facebook and you guys can find the event there. We'll make sure yeah. that we post. We'll put up another post. We are not for those opening of you that are the interested. event for the public yet. So if not you yet. are a member. Because we want to get people that of, listen to the podcast yes, first yes, to get yes. the first opportunity to go to the correct, event. Correct. 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 So, so yes. and then after that, we'll open it up to everybody else. But like we said, tickets are already, they're already selling. So right. make sure you guys get your tickets. On our uh, podcast group on Facebook, and you guys will find yes. the link. It's and on it's on Eventbrite, Eventbrite yes. But if you are a member on the Facebook page, you could go there, and uh, yeah, just click the link. It's and yeah. an easy way to get to our Facebook link is if you guys go to our website, opposites attract podcast dot com. When you go there, you'll see all of our social media links. Uh, when you you'll see it at the top of the website, you guys can click all the different links for all the different social media, and that'll take you to that. You guys can follow us there. You can watch the podcast on our website. You can listen to it there. 
Uh, and you'll also see a link uh, to support the show. And when you click on that, it'll take you to our Amazon link. Anything that you purchase through that link doesn't cost you anything extra. So whenever you do your Amazon shopping, if you click on that link and then go to your cart and check out through there, it'll help out the show. It'll They'll send us a little kickback every time you guys buy mm-hmm. something. And uh, also, you guys can find our merch on Amazon. If you search Opposites Attract Podcast, you'll find T-shirts, pop sockets, phone cases, different things like that. We really got to get on it and make some more stuff. <laughs> yes. But um, but yeah, you guys can find it there. And uh, you also see a link to Trust Inc. And Trust Inc. is? We are a nationwide mobile notary and signing agency. So if you are in the process of purchasing, refinancing, or selling your home, you can request Trust Inc. to be your signing agency. Yep. And you can go to Trust Inc. directly by going to trustinkusa.com. And we're also affiliates with Pinwheel, which is the best smartphone available out there for kids. Uh, when you guys get a pinwheel phone, you'll download the parent parent portal app and you can monitor all the text messages that come through your kid's phone. You'll see all the call logs. You have to approve all the contacts that go into mm-hmm. the phone. So there, there is nobody that they're going to be talking to that you don't know who they are. You have to approve everybody. And, uh, they also the app store, all the apps that are available for the phone are picked by counselors, by therapists, by parents, just people that are, con- uh, concerned with kids, activity on the phone and what they get addicted Mm -hmm. to and what they're looking at and all the apps that are available on there make kids more productive it teaches them languages music and it's a you know good stuff for them to have on the phone and uh, if you guys would like to learn more you guys can go to pinwheel.com and if you want 10 percent off you can use our code O-A-P-T-E-N, all together, all in caps, on pinwheel.com. And shout out, shout out to Amanda Lyons, who purchased a pinwheel nice. phone. Yeah, yeah awesome. So her second one. You know what? I, and, and I'll let you guys know. So recently, our daughter lost her phone. Yes. And one of the great options with the pinwheel phone is the GPS tracking. So she lost her phone and... She had, she was like, I left it at school. I might have left it at the movies. I might have fucking left it. I, who knows? Know. Who, sorry. <laughs> this is probably, probably no, no dropping F bombs during the pinwheel ad. But she had no clue, like, what happened to the phone. And she had lost it for days. And, like, we talked about her room was a mess. And we're like, Did you check your room? Did you check the couch pillows? Did you check everywhere? And she's like, I looked and it's not anywhere. And I'm like, Well, the GPS in my app shows the last place this phone was was in our house. So it's around here somewhere. Yep, and she swore up and down that it was not, and she ended up finding and it in her backpack. We were getting ready to start looking <laughs> yeah. at like buying, replacing yeah. the phone or whatever, but I'm, I'm like, this phone is here somewhere, mm-hmm. and she found it. Yep. So you guys will know where your kids are at all the time. If you guys want 10% off, like I said, promo code OAP. T-E-N, all together, all in caps, on pinwheel.com. And also, you guys can go to buymeacoffee.com slash opposite pod. If you guys want to support the show, you guys can buy us a coffee like Sonia's drinking or a whiskey. Right, like babe? Like you're drinking. <laughs> like me. But yeah, what it is, it's like a virtual coffee, virtual drink. If you guys uh, want to support the show, you guys can do that there. Like we said, if, if we met you guys at a coffee shop or a bar or whatever, and you guys let us know you listen to the show, we'd love to get to know you a little bit and buy you a drink or a coffee and, and catch up with you. So if you guys would like to do that for us, you guys can do it there. So thank you guys. Yay. Buymeacoffee.com <laughs> slash opposite pod. So we were talking about that, uh, the resistance, right? And so how do we go from, I feel like there was something else that I was going to come back to. There was, but I don't remember. Damn it. But I, I did say. you interrupted me. I was talking about the, uh, the resistance, you know, like how we feel. Oh, that, if you could forgive some, like, do you have to forgive them or can you be okay with. Like, okay. I think what you like were being, being willing to forgive. Right. Because is what I was saying sometimes, I mean, the thing of it, it all depends on the other individual as well. Right. If they are open and receptive to, you know, the, the situation. Right. Because yeah. you may be like, okay, you know, if you're in therapy or coaching, whatever, and they're like, okay, well, the next step is for you to, you know, forgive. So you got to pick up the phone or whatever it may be. And someone's not receptive of what's happening or. Well, this is this is what I'm thinking right now, because sometimes a lot of times we we all have our own issues. Right. Yeah, we all do. Yes. And all the people that we interact with, they got their issues, right? And sometimes we're getting our shit together 
and they're not exactly where we're at. And it's like, right. well, look, look at me. Like I'm doing, I'm working on myself. I'm getting better. Well, and that's pride and, talking. And, 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 you're, you and you're not That's there. not how you go and, about no, doing I'm, it, I'm, but okay. But no. I'm, I'm just saying, it's like, I'm working on myself. <laughs> I'm getting better, and you obviously still have some shit to work out. You're not where I'm at yet, <laughs> no, right? That, that's not how you go about it but, at all. But what I'm saying is, like, sometimes, like, they do. Like, they're not at that point yet. Where It, it when doesn't you, even when you, matter, though. Okay. It really doesn't matter if they are not at that point that point or not. What I'm, what I'm saying is that sometimes to, like, build on something, like, you guys both have to be at a certain point to kind of move forward. But I'm saying like the yeah. willingness to accept or, or to move forward, like to put the past behind you, because some people like they hold grudges. Right. I'm somebody that that yeah. like like, you know, I've held grudges. Yes. But like I've told you, I've had friends of mine in my life that I've talked to and then just completely just cut off because it's like, hey, if this relationship isn't important to you, then why is it important to me? I'm not chasing you around all over the place. And it's not like, like, oh my God, poor me. It's like, no, like yeah. I'm, whatever. If it doesn't matter to you, then I got other shit to do. You know what I mean? But if they, like, you know me, if they were to come back around and be like, hey, I messed up or, or they don't even have to say I messed up. You don't need an apology. I don't, I don't from need, them. I don't need you don't an apology. Need forgiveness. And that's from what them. I'm, and that's what I'm saying. Right. Is just the willingness to move forward. No. Yeah. This is your healing this is your process so so do you have to do you have to forgive or can you just get to the point where you're willing to just move forward you couldn't forgive even if they're not on the same page as you page as you it's okay. all about you at this point you know if you said if you say you know if you're in a situation or you did somebody wrong and you're giving them a call and you're just letting them know hey you know, in the past, blah, 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 blah. I just wanted you to know, you know, that I'm sorry. And that, you know, I hope that we can see past this. You don't need their forgiveness. It's you opening your heart to speak your truth, to let go and to release. If they are not ready to accept, that has nothing to do with you because exactly what you said, you're in a different place in your life and they may not be there. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're doing your part and knowing that what you did, you said your piece. And even if they did something to hurt you and they're not willing to take your apology right then and there, it's okay. Yeah. Because you said your piece. You well, release your, your apology. Yeah. That's if you, if or they have an apology coming. But well, if they're like, now, I will never forgive you. That has but, nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. But what if what if it's not an apology that's due? Like, if truthfully, there is no apology due for me. And I don't expect an apology back from the other person either. You know, it just doesn't... Like, they don't have to apologize. They just need to reach out again. You know what I mean? Like, I don't... I don't oh, excuse me. I don't have an ap ap apology to give because I didn't do anything. I wrong. didn't do anything. Do you know what I mean? So where's the healing what process I'm, at then? I don't understand if. Because there's still a grudge, you know, for some people, there's still for a, you or no, for no, no, them. I, I'm, I'm not saying for me, like for some people, it's like, there's still feelings. Like, I mean, for me, it's like, whatever I, like I said, like the, the grudges or I don't know if maybe that's just kind of like my cold side where. But you have a cold side. Yeah. It, it's weird because I do have a cold side. Like right now I'm thinking about a specific friend, right? That I used to know that I was very close to that our relationship didn't seem like it was as important to them as it was to me because I thought we were cool friends, like really, really close. But at that point, it was like, all right, well, it doesn't seem to be the way I thought it was. And, you know, you just grow apart and you move on. Mm -hmm. But at this point in my life, like I could die and never talk to them again. Mm -hmm. And I would be perfectly fine with that. Or if for some reason they were to reach out, like I'm, I'm open. 
you know what I mean? It's like that willingness to accept. But the call's not coming the other way. Unless for some reason I have something, I run in across something, like I reminisce on something and be like, oh, I remember that one time with that one guy that something, and I send them a message. Or I heard a song and I send them a message. But most likely the calls aren't coming from my side. And there's no need for anything to come from my side. I just, in that situation, you know, there may be something that you're feeling. (laughs) You think so? You may not be where you think you are. I and and I'm saying that because there's times where mm, perfect ex- example we have a neighbor um she used to be our neighbor and she moved 2 hours away and her and I don't talk every day or even every 2 weeks or even every month but when God puts her on my heart I reach out to her and there's times where we won't speak for months. That's different, though, because I have those friends, too. But w- even if she weren't to call me back, I wouldn't feel a certain way because I just wanted to give her a call to check in on her because God put her on, her on my heart. But if she doesn't call me back, I'm not going to feel a certain way. Just because... I don't know where she's at in her life. She may be going through some tough stuff right now and she doesn't really want to talk. Maybe she's in this dark place. I'll continue to call her and say, hey, you're on my mind. Maybe I'm an asshole. Just checking in. (laughs) Is that what you're saying? (laughs) I didn't say that. You said that. But that's 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 me. You understand? Because. You know, there's times where people are not in a good spot and they're really not wanting to talk to anybody. But if they are on your heart, it's because you're supposed to make the move. So just pick up the phone, send a text. Hey, been thinking about you kind of deal. And when they're ready to come out of that dark place, then yes. Okay. You know, just my two cents. Maybe I'll do that. You can pay me later. (laughs) Maybe I'll do that. (laughs) I'll sign up for one of your sessions. (laughs) Oh, man. So we were talking earlier about the the hesitation, the regret, right? And how we, Mm -mm. like how it, it keeps us from doing things and how it's kept us from doing things. Right. Like things that I mean, we probably should have been fucking renting cars already. I just you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's not resistance for me. That's not the resistance I'm feeling with the coaching or the book. All that is, is we just need to find time and go do what we need to do. It's very simple. I think that's it. I feel more confident with that. I don't know. I think it's excuses. But I've been looking stuff up. Yeah. So that's, I I mean, that's why I feel more confident. It's like, I feel that what, you know, I already know what we need to do. So we we just just got to do it, you know, and and see if that's something that we want to do because trust stink is picking up again. And so, you know, looking at the time that we do have, because we don't want to overextend ourselves, ourselves, because there's so much that we still need to do with the podcast yeah, and the event and everything else. And that, and you ask yourself, is that an excuse? Whatever, it's all bullshit. Or is that we need the to get truth? to fucking is work. Is it? Yes, I, don't I think know. so. I think so. I think a lot. I think more often than not, it's fucking bullshit, and we need to get to work. I think a lot, we we're very good at fucking making excuses and justifying why we're not doing shit. We should have been doing a lot of shit a long time ago that we should have been doing. So you're feeling a certain way about this process? No, I think it's everything. I think it's everything. And everybody. I'm speaking about Turo only right now. I don't feel. No, I'm talking about everything, period. The podcast, Mm -hmm. the mailing list. I'm talking about everything. And it's not just me. Everybody has shit that they know they should be doing. Oh, yeah. And when you look at it, it's like, I've been fucking around. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And no, like, when when I look at where we are, and we're, we're, we're in a great spot. But at the same time, we've been doing certain things for a certain period of time, and it feels like we should be farther along in certain things. Right. Right? Yep. I agree. But, but at the same time, I don't, I don't beat myself up about it a lot because I know that there's a lot of shit that I know I should be doing that we're not fucking doing. So it's like, how do you, it's kind of like one of our friends that like we talked about in our old business that where we met, right? 
And it's one of those, it's, it's a network marketing business. It's one of those things where people tell you, it's like, it's hard to say that this shit doesn't work when you really haven't given it everything oh, that you're yeah. supposed to no, give it. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. Right? Yes. And it's yes. like, 100%. well, I'm not really having the success. That It's like, well, did you fucking do everything that you knew you were supposed to do? If the answer right. is no, then yeah, of course it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Right. You know what? And that's just kind of how I feel about a lot of things. I, I think it's a, it's everything a just kind of piling up. It's, it's, a, it's a combination of everything that we're not doing that we're supposed to be doing. That is just, we're coming to a point where it's just enough is enough. So when it comes to that, when you say what we're supposed to be doing, it, it's like, I don't know what that looks like. I don't understand. I don't know what that looks like. And I almost feel like we have to hire a coach to get us to the next level when it comes to this podcast. Because there's a lot of things that you don't know what you don't know. It, it like, reminds me of a saying from our old business. Ignorance on fire. Mm. Is better than. Sometimes. Knowledge on ice. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's most of the time. It's the Jocko saying. Default aggressive. When shit happens, you go default aggressive. You attack. Sometimes you do need to step back and think. But more often than not, when something happens, you need to attack. You need to act. When something happens, you act. Not just sit back and don't do shit. That's the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. Ignorance on fire is when you don't <laughs> know shit and you just act. You're just acting. Yeah. Oh, I don't. You just fucking tell people about your business. I don't know. Talk to this person. And then they explain it to you and they sell them something. Yeah. But when you're just sitting there reading your fucking manual, doing nothing, sitting at home, watching YouTube videos about what you could be doing instead of doing the shit. Yeah. That's when you're missing out. Well, the thing of it is that in order to attack, there has to be a plan. And there's no plan. And I think written. that's an excuse. No, there's sometimes I think a lot of times that's an excuse because you'll figure out the plan because your plan is going to adjust no matter what, depending on who you are, because you work in a certain manner and, and, and I that, work in a certain manner. And that's and, the opposite of the way it should work for us yeah. because I'm saying you should just attack, yeah. which is not what I I'm the one that should be saying that you need to plan it out. You're the one that's like, let's fucking go for it. Right. No, because when it comes to this kind of stuff, I need a plan because my schedule's everywhere, right? Like we're on different pages because you didn't know when the event was. When was the event? It's the 21st, Do you know what I'm right? saying? I did the event bright. I've yeah. been posting on the face. So I think it's getting getting everything together, getting on the same page and getting a plan and working through it. Like just doing doing it. So back to the kids. <laughs> <laughs> We already know that we don't do the shit that we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> so if we don't do the shit that we're supposed to be doing, how do we get them to do the shit that they're supposed to be doing? How do we get them not to fucking hesitate and go for it like we do? Because I've been talking to Adriana too. Like she's been, well, with the, with the book, I'm just going to give an example. You know, like I talk to her about what I'm feeling, like the yeah. fear you know, the procrastination because of the fear of failure, you know, and, and not, not ever just not doing anything like this before, you know, and I think just leading by example, like you said, just leading, it's leading by example, but letting them know, like, let this conversation that we're having, having this conversation in front of them. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. Like, you know, dad and I have been working on this mailing list for three years now. <laughs> And haven't done much with it, you know, kind of deal. And letting yeah. them hear the real talk so that they know that we also struggle with this. We struggle. It's and, crazy. You know, and we are not perfect, you know. And Obviously, so, yeah. you know, it's just having that real talk in front in front of them. Damn. What? It, it's just every everything. Thinking about everything added up our show, our kids, the things that we teach them, the things that we talk to them about. The, well, the things that we're trying to teach them while we're trying to learn them ourselves. Right. <laughs> it's a, it's a, and, and, and like the, knowing the right things to do, but not doing them ourselves. 
but trying to teach it to them because we know it's the right thing to do. But you're it's acting fucking hard. You you sound like you've been beating yourself up about this for a long time and it's coming out. Um and I think that's why it's weighing like a lot on you. Yeah, I mean I, I think about a lot of things all the time. But one of the things that I've started thinking about, or I mean maybe just right now. But it's one of those, I, I remember reading a a post or an article or something. It was when we first started podcasting. It was like, what, like successful podcasts, like where, where are they at? Like when a podcast is become successful, like what are their statistics or whatever? And I remember seeing something that said like the, the average successful podcast has been podcasting for over two or three years and they... Holy shit. Not good. It's our fucking three year anniversary. Today? Yesterday. <laughs> Yay for fucking us. Uh, and one hour into the fucking show. <laughs> what a horrible. This is exactly what we're fucking talking about on this episode. Exactly what the fuck we're talking. Oh, we don't even know what the hell our fucking. Uh, what, how are you going to have success? Yay for us. Fucking one hour. Yay. Three, three years of podcasting. And happy Easter. <laughs> this is the shit that I'm fucking talking about right in here. You know what I mean? Yeah. The shit that we know we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. That's some bullshit right there. Calling us fucking out an hour into our own fucking show. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is what I'm talking about. It's. Hey, but it looks good and it sounds good. <laughs> you got to give that to us. But we know the things because that 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 is it. It looks good. It sounds good. We've had some guests on here. There is no reason mm -hmm. except for one. And you're looking at it. Why we're not where we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And if you look in the mirror. You might feel the same way, right? Yep. No, because sure. that is the bottom line. And and that's the resistance. And that's exactly why I've been hounding you to start reading that book. I'm going to check it out. Because when we get on that book together. What's that book? And we start the war of art and we start conquering all this resistance together. We will start moving. We will start, you know being on the same page because we're yeah. going to recognize all the things that we should be doing that we're not doing. And even if we, there are things that we don't know like where to start, that means we need to invest some money on us yeah. on getting a coach or somebody who's maybe helped a podcast become successful, the social media, what just, you know, building the resource list, just all of that, because if we don't know what it takes to build a successful podcast, then how are we going to do it? But no matter what, we got to figure it out. It's on us. Exactly. It's on us. Whether yes. whether it succeeds or fails or whatever yeah. happens, it's on us. Yep. And sometimes it takes investing into ourselves to do that. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. It's crazy. So this one's for you, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to get busy. <laughs> Betty says we always have a positive. Um... Yeah, this one went down the <laughs> shitter. We got a lot of things to think about. The podcast isn't going anywhere. We've been doing this for way too long. There, There's no nowhere to go. Yep. Like we, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think you, What it, we were playing a game with Audrey the other day and you said something about me being stubborn. Like, yes. This motherfucker's going to die doing a podcast because that's just how I am. I don't fucking quit. But there's also nothing and we're already in an hour into this, but a lot of times you are set in your ways and it's, and it just is what it is. And even if I were to tell you something because you don't respect me on that level, you won't listen to me. Yes. But you're crazy until. Yep. Until it fucking works. Or because until you, you realize it yourself, yeah, no, that change needs to happen. You're, you're crazy until it works because that happens a lot. I mean, it may, maybe not happens a lot, but there's a lot of people that they're like, oh, so-and-so is fucking crazy. You see what they're doing? See how many hours so-and-so did this? They've been in their fucking house all day doing this, doing that. They're nuts. They're nuts. They're nuts. Oh, they got, oh, <laughs> this happened? Oh, wow. 
Oh, how did that happen? And then when shit starts taking off for them, like, oh, they're pretty smart. So and so's <laughs> a genius. Wow, they really got it down. Hey, you know what I mean? We are all geniuses. I'm just saying. I- I'm just saying. We are all geniuses in our own way. And when you find your way, that's when you become a genius. And with that, <laughs> thank you guys for listening to Opposites of Track Podcast. Like we said before, make sure you guys go to our website, OppositesTrackPodcast.com. You guys can watch the podcast there, listen to it there, share it with your friends. You guys can support the show there. Yes, yes. Anything thank you else? for your love. Thank you for your support. And thank you for watching Opposites Track Podcast. Where we get better. Together. Bye. Bye.